<clears throat> All right, this is Bluegrass Sports Nation. We're here in Jackson tonight. The Jackson City Tigers have prevailed in the All-A semi-state over Barberville 3-2 on penalty kicks. Coach Gentry Hayes, man, what's your thoughts right now? Hell of a, hell of a soccer match here tonight. I mean, it's it's. I'm glad you're getting me now. We've had about 15 or 20 minutes for me to kind of collect everything and and think about it. But I mean, I'm so blessed with a group of kids that just that just doesn't know how to give up. I mean, they they really don't. You, uh, you know, I mean, you were just talking about we went down 2-0 after after. I mean, I feel like we dominated the first half. We did everything we wanted to do. We had missed some easy chances. Stuff didn't go our way. Go down 2-0 in the second half, and then with about 15 minutes left. Uh, Peyton Tharp and Hilton Sizemore up front went to work. They kept their heads up. They kept plugging away. Peyton gets a penalty kick, draws a foul in the box, converts it, and then uh, put pressure on them. Hilton gets up front, disrupts a pass out of the back, makes a, a beeline sprint, disrupts the pass. Peyton, come, Peyton comes in, cleans it up, take it to penalty kicks. We, you know, we beat we beat Hazard in penalty kicks to get here. We we beat them in the All AC semifinals for the 14th region. And uh, I told my guys, I said, you know, we've been here before. This is our comfort zone. We're a very smart team. We're a very calm, composed team, and and they held it together tonight and got it done for me. Yeah. Talk a little bit about Tharp now. Outstanding game here tonight. You, he's uh, I think scored 24 goals up to now in the season. Just an unreal athlete. Then you put him in goal and penalty kicks as well. Tell us a little bit about him and his big night here tonight. Well, I mean, for people that have followed the team the last couple of years, you know, the last time we had this interview in this same game after we beat OBI two years ago, I had Peyton running left wing, and he scored in in that game. Last year, uh, he played keeper all season. I never hardly came out in the field, was a dominant goalie last season, and he just played where I needed him. This season, Paxton Howard has stepped up. I mean, you wouldn't know, you wouldn't be hearing Peyton Tharp's name with the goals if Paxton Howard didn't work his butt off all summer to get ready to play the net for us during the season. So being able to slot Paxton in in the net and then get Peyton out in the field and use that athleticism you talked about has just been just been so big for us. Um, so I mean, I'm going to split credit between between Paxton and Peyton, but but yeah, Peyton is just clinical in front of the goal. I mean, he missed some easy ones tonight, but those were the first ones he's missed all year. And then you know dominates the game in the field and then goes in like you said and saves three penalties in the PK shootout. I mean, what else what else can a coach ask for other okay. than that? Coach, talk about these kids. Now, two years ago, we're here. We broadcast that game. You guys are down to the last, at the death. You tie it, win it over OBI to go on to state that this year. We apologize to everybody out there. We couldn't get the live feed going tonight down here, so you couldn't see this wonderful soccer match. But what do you teach these kids, man? The character just shows through when the chips are down at the end of the game. It's, it's a Jackson City thing. I mean, how many, how many times in the past have there been big Jackson City teams that were – that were down late and pulled it together. I mean, I was I got was lucky enough to be on a handful of them, and I think it's just bred into you up there where you're a small school. I mean, we have to basically fight and scrap for just about anything we get. I mean, whenever we're trying to field a team, and we've only got 12 or 13 kids, and everybody else has got 20 and you know 18 or 19, and they're swapping subs in and out. It's just ingrained in the kids that you know you have to do it for yourself. I mean, you have to stay together. You have to. Everybody has to be pulling in the same direction. I was bragging on them after the game. We had every opportunity down 2-0 to self-destruct, to start pointing fingers at each other, to start, you know, uh, just handling it the way most young teams would handle it. I mean, it happens all the time. And I didn't see it a single time. And if we had, if we had seen it, we wouldn't be having this, you know, good interview right now. So, I mean, I, but I, I really do. I think it comes back to being a small school and being that tight-knit atmosphere. Everybody's fighting for Nobody's just fighting for stats. Nobody's fighting for a scholarship. Everybody's fighting for – Jackson City and for the kid to the right and left of them. Well, Coach, you're dripping right now from your celebratory jump at the North <laughs> Fork of the Kentucky River here down at the boat dock. Congratulations on this win. What's your expectations going on to state? I mean, I, ex exactly what I expect every game. I expect us to show up, to fight hard, to compete. I don't care if we're playing, uh, you know, Wolf County or Powell County in one of these local teams that we play or if we go to uh, Frankfurt next weekend and get, you know, some school out of Louisville or Lexington or Central Kentucky. I mean, I, regardless of the oppor opportunity or the opposition, there we go, regardless of the opposition, my guys show up and fight. And, I mean, and that's exactly what I'm expecting next weekend. All right, man. Congratulations. Great soccer match here tonight. Great win for Jackson City. Moving on to state. Congratulations. Go coach. Tigers.